You are listening to the SDSU Football Podcast, presented by the East Village Times with your hosts, Andre Hagverdian and Paul Garrison. Welcome, listeners, to another episode of the SDSU Football Podcast. As always, I am Andre Hagverdian and joined by Paul Garrison. So the Aztecs beat the Wolfpack of Nevada 23-7 this past Saturday. Behind a dominant defensive performance, 10 tackles for loss, two turnovers, one of them returned for a touchdown by Patrick McMorris. The offense was not great, but they did convert enough third downs in the first three quarters of the game to control the time of possession. They got three field goals, and then Jalen Maiden broke a highlight touchdown run to put the game away and ended 23-7. to But moving on, uh, the next game for the Aztecs is a rivalry game and arguably the biggest of the season if they want to win the conference championship. That's right. It's the battle for the old oil can trophy against Fresno State. To help us dissect this matchup, we have a special guest on our podcast episode, Matt Wadley, who is an editor and contributor at the East Village Times and also a staff writer for various media outlets, including Super West Sports, for which he covers the Mountain West Conference. He also lives in Fresno and is a diehard Fresno State football fan, so he has a lot of insight to share with us. We want to uh, welcome Matt onto the SDSC Football Podcast. How are you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys doing? Well, Matt, welcome, buddy. This is like a long time coming, man. I know I've been waiting a long time for this. <laughs> I mean, there there was not a there was not more of a perfect game to uh, have you on than the uh, the the battle for the old oil can trophy. Yeah, I'm I'm sure we'll talk about it, but I'm pretty nervous for the weekend, honestly. So, well, for yeah. for uh, for for our listeners, they they may not be as familiar with your expertise on Fresno State. So, could you just uh, give a, a couple of lines, a few moments about what it is that that, that makes you an expert, who you write for, um, things of that nature? I'm gonna age myself here, but my first year at Fresno State was 2009. So, uh, I Youngin. started following them like, yeah, in 2007, I started following them when I realized like. I might go to the school. So thankfully I got to see the glory days of Devontae Adams and Derek Carr and Ryan Matthews and all those guys. So um, I got to live through all those years. And I mean, I've been in Fresno now for 13 years. So it's become my, uh, my hometown team, even though my parents are San Diego State alone. So they kind of like it, but yeah, you know, I write for all, all kinds of, of spots. Uh, I cover, I cover the mountain West specifically for super West. So I got more in tune with the mountain West as a whole as opposed to just Fresno State and San Diego State. So, but yeah, I mean, I've been Fresno State diehard since 2007, I guess you could say 15 years. So that feels like a long time for me, probably not as long as some other people out there. But yeah, I'm excited for the weekend and we'll see what happens. Your parents sound like great people. My sister went to San Diego State too. So I was a little upset that I uh, didn't get accepted, but living there, I guess. Black sheet up of the family for sure. What what are the people in Fresno kind of uh, thinking about this game heading into the weekend? It's been a pretty rough season. Honestly, a little bit of anxiety because started off one and four and won the last two games, so trending in the right direction. But if you would have asked me a month ago how I would have felt about this game, I would have felt a lot better. But the last few weeks have changed drastically for both programs. So I think, you know, pretty nervous to see what happens. Um, which is surprising because going into the year, you're like, oh, Fresno State's going to compete for a Mountain West title. So uh, it's just been a total, you know, not what we expect to happen from the beginning of the year until now. Okay, but here's that. Okay, push back a little bit on that. Fresno State is in control of their own destiny. They've already beaten San Jose State. They get the Aztecs at home. What's there to be nervous about, man? Yeah, I, I get that, but just losing to UConn, like how, how that loss really like crushed like any hope that fans had. So that's a that's a terrible loss. So I think that's just still fresh. I mean, it was only a few weeks ago they lost to UConn. So uh, 
It's just you don't know which version of the team is going to show up, and Jake Hayner's still not there. Evan Williams still is out, so it's kind of pins and needles. You know, like they should be a good team, and they are, but until those guys come back, it's going to be just anxiety every single week. Yeah, if Fresno, the winner of this game this weekend is going to be in the driver's seat, but Fresno even more because they've already right. beaten San Jose State, and so they would essentially have – you know, a two game lead over San Diego state because they have the tiebreaker and then San Jose state, they're obviously tied with. And if, even if San Jose state wins out, they would lose the tiebreaker. And then in a three way, they would have had beaten, beaten both. So this is a big game, obviously for many reasons, but Fresno could really put themselves in the driver's seat with a win and San Diego state with a loss would be climbing uphill, even with four games left. A few weeks ago, you know, I had San Jose State as, like, I mean, surprisingly on top of the division, and they still are, but the last few weeks, I kind of think, you know, the winner of this game is going to be the one that wins the division. That's kind of how it's trending in, in my head, so uh, it's, a, it's a big game, you know, it's 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 going to be it's gonna be fun, and uh, it's weird, Valley Children's Stadium is what it's called now, but it'll always be, it'll always be Bulldog Stadium for me, so that's a it's a tough place to go in and play. So Fresno State definitely has that advantage coming this weekend. Okay. So when you say that your Fresno area, everybody there is worried about this game, it has more to do with who Fresno State is and not so much who San Diego State is. I mean, it's both because a few weeks ago, San Diego State looked really bad, right? And then uh, the last few weeks, they've kind of figured things out. Like, uh, it's it's a different San Diego State team than it was three weeks ago. And um, Fresno State is trending in the right direction for sure, but so is San Diego State. So, But it's more about, you know, whenever you lose your, your star quarterback, it's hard to overcome. And I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, is Logan Fife going to be able to lead this team to a third straight win? That's the, you know, that's the biggest question. It's just anytime you lose your, your top player, it's it's hard to, to overcome, especially against one of the better teams in the conference. So you mentioned Logan Fife. He's he leads the conference with a seventy percent completion percentage, but he's only thrown two touchdowns for six interceptions. Coach Tedford talked about how he's seen growth from him. But what have what have you seen from him? Have you seen growth? And what do you expect from him on Saturday night against the Aztecs defense? Yeah, I, for sure, I've seen growth and. Uh, you know, to be fair, all training camp, all off season, Logan Fife was not even remotely expected to get any snaps except for guards time. So when Hayner got hurt and he had to come in, it was a lot of people aren't ready for that moment. And I think that's why the UConn game was a struggle because he was learning the system. They were learning him. And I think the last few weeks they figured out how to run the team with Fife at quarterback. And I mean, just hand Jordan Mims a football. Like, if you've seen Jordan Mims the last few weeks, you know this guy's a monster running back. And uh, Fresno fans, you know, have been waiting a long time for Jordan Mims to be the bell cow running back. So, but, I mean, yeah, I've seen growth. And I think it's more of Jeff Tedford has realized how to use Logan Fife. And it's in a conservative matter. Like you say, he does a lot of interceptions, right? He's He needs more time to develop into a Mountain West, right, top end starting quarterback that they hope he can be and you know to be fair he wasn't expected to play so it just came as a surprise to everybody when he went down that injury so you bring up mims i mean i found it super weird last week with the aztecs that nevada basically abandoned the run even though going into the game you would have thought that that was their best approach um i don't expect fresno state to do that so then doesn't that give I guess Bulldog fans confidence going into this game because the Aztecs haven't exactly been great stopping the run, um, primarily stopping guys with, with good size. Yeah, um, for sure. Right. Because like I said, Mims is a, I mean, he, he's a star. Like this guy's an NFL talent and he just needed an opportunity. So it just makes me a little uneasy because, Jeff Tipford always likes to kind of resort back to his style of offense. Yeah, it just makes me a little uneasy just seeing him go back to his old ways all the time. And uh, is he going to run the ball or is he going to really try to push to pass the football? Like, we really don't know what to expect with with the, 
you know, Jeff Tedford right now. So, Speaking of passing the ball, uh, Fresno has got some great receivers. Uh, obviously, Jalen Cropper or Jalen Moreno Cropper this year. He's really good. He had a great year last year. He had a, he was having a great game against San Diego State before he left with an injury. Having you know, has forty five catches this year. The leading receiver for San Diego State has nineteen. So just think about that contrast. What have you seen from Cropper this year? And how 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 do you, how do teams go about trying to stop him? I actually went to the first game, the Cal Poly game in person, and I was a little concerned of the offense because. Right, Ryan Grell went with Kalen to Washington, so Fresno had a new offensive coordinator. And if you watch Fresno last year compared to this year, they took a lot more shots down the field. And this year, uh, like I mentioned, the Tedford offense, they throw a lot of short passes. So, honestly, Cropper, Moreno Cropper, I'm just going to call him, you know, Cropper, right? But in a way, he's regressed, not because of the talent, but because of the scheme. And uh, that's why you see, like, like uh, Nico Remigio from Cal – He's really blossomed into that guy that catches the ball in short yardage and can get can get yak yards. So um, it's not that Cropper has regressed from a talent perspective. It's just the scheme isn't really suited for him. So as a you know from a fan's perspective, perspective, it's a little frustrating. Like you need to take some shots down the field, especially against good teams like Boise and USC and Oregon State. Like you need to take shots down the field instead of trying to win the battle in the trenches against teams you can't really hang around with but Cropper is definitely an NFL talent it's just the scheme compared to the Ryan Grubb offense from last year is not not encouraging from a fan perspective or from you know an offensive scheme so it's been weird honestly but I'm not surprised because when Tedford was here before I mean it's just he ran the same offense so it's nothing new nothing unexpected I guess was Tedford the the guy who was the the head coach? We talked about the Gloria days earlier. No, that was uh, no, that wasn't Tedford. Was that was that the Rooter? Man, I've been to a lot of coaches in Fresno, so I gotta go back and retrace. It was, okay. it was Pat Hill, right? The Rooter was there. Tedford was there, and then you know Kalen was there, and then Tedford was there again, and you know they, yeah, that's been the they hardest part to keep track of that. And that's why I was a little concerned that, like, they're going to hire this guy again. But, I mean, it made sense, and Hayner returned because Tedford was there. So, I guess, and then it worked out. So, go, jumping over to the defensive side of the ball, what is it that, that Fresno State does well that uh, potentially is going to be giving the Aztecs trouble um, this upcoming week? That's a good question. I chuckled a little bit because the Fresno State defense historically has been the downfall Every year, it seems like the defense is what's holding them back. And uh, that Oregon State game, that last drive, I was like, man, I know Oregon State's going to score the football. Like, they just can't stop them. So, uh, and that's exactly what happened. And that Oregon timeout team, helped. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't talk about that game. Okay, but, so, uh, all right, all right. but I think the front seven has improved a lot. And I think they have a lot of players up front that, you know, have talent. Again, it's just they buckle in high leverage situations, but against San Jose state, they were able to really put together a nice game and limit the Spartans to, I mean, they barely scored. And uh, that really showed like their toughness and their grit and their fight. So, you know, just scrapping together a good game. And again, Evan Williams isn't out there. He's the heart and soul of that defense. So it's going to be a, a total team effort and they really just got to buckle down and just, just grind. It's going to be another grinded out old school Mountain West football game, 20 to 19, some random score like that. You know how it goes. So, Tell, tell us about David Perales. I, in my preview, I called him the leading candidate for Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, he leads the conference in sacks and is second in tackles for loss. You know, why has he been so effective this, this year? Yeah, Perales is a guy that's been effective. I mean, a lot, if you watch Fresno State football, it's just that this year he's taking the team. And, I mean, he's going to the NFL next year, so he's boosting his draft stock. But he's just so tough to guard. And I think, um, you know, with Aaron Mosby leaving, and, you know, he's in the NFL with the Panthers, so uh, props to him for that. But with Mosby leaving, it kind of opened the way for Perales to be that guy to put the defense on his back. And uh, especially that – front seven you know he he anchors it and he's the 
the heart and soul up front. And right now he's the heart and soul of the defense with Williams out. I'm excited to see how he finishes his career. I always get excited when Fresno State guys get drafted and they have good careers because a lot of times they're just – they get drafted in the seventh round and they end up don't doing anything. But Perales is a guy that has, again, NFL-type talent, and I think he was really able to showcase it this year with his final year in college and uh, just being able to put the whole defense on his back. Would you agree – with my statement that he's probably the leading candidate for defensive player of the year, is there anyone I'm missing that probably should be up there instead? I'd agree, right? The, I mean, we know the Mountain West defense is nothing to hang your hats on, but Corrales, Corrales has been amazing. Of course, I'm going to say out of the Fresno guy, but I mean, really, if you watch college football, you see Corrales. He's, you know, he should be playing somewhere besides Fresno State, if we're being honest. And he could have got on at other schools, but he came to Fresno State and, you know, he's been marvelous. So, You know, Fresno State's need to be able to to hit the deep ball. I think the same thing is true for San Diego State. I mean, I think you're going into this game where both defenses are going to want to make the quarterbacks have to beat them through the air. What do they have in the secondary? You mentioned Williams being out, but what, what do they have in the secondary to be able to take away any semblance of a deep ball for San Diego State? Yeah, right now it's pretty rough in the secondary. So I think that's, you know, one of the biggest concerns is uh, San Diego State's really been able to pass the ball lately since uh, Jalen, since Jalen Maiden came in. And uh, that's a whole nother story that that's a, that's a great story to talk about. But they look good against New Mexico and they look good against San Jose State. But San Diego State is a team where they can expose Fresno State's secondary. And Oregon State, USC, of course, like those schools expose them for sure. And uh, now Williams is out. So that makes me uneasy, you know, stopping the run and, you know, getting pressure. I'm not too worried about, but stopping the deep ball, that's where it's going to be, you know, really make or break for Fresno State. And I'm just not sure if they have, you know, the guys in the back to kind of hang around with San Jose, even though they haven't really thrown the ball well this season lately they have and that's the most concerning part from a Fresno State perspective one one guy I was surprised to when I looked at the depth chart and not see the starter was Cam Lockridge the cornerback transfer from Hawaii I think the Mountain West when they did their top rankings preseason he was I think third or fourth ranked cornerback and now he's not a starter is that injury related is that performance related what can you add there yeah, that's been kind of a puzzling thing too. I, I, I think it's just a performance thing. Um, again, Tedford's more of an old school coach, so you know if they don't practice well, if they don't, you know, have the right attitude in the locker room, he's not afraid to kind of take them away and roll with someone else, even if they're not the same talent level. So maybe he didn't pick up the system very well, but from from everything I've like read and everything, it's not injury related. It's just something about Tedford and the coaching staff just isn't exactly trusting him. Hmm. So let's talk about Jalen Maiden. You said it'd be great to talk about Jalen Maiden. Let's talk about Jalen Maiden. Have you ever seen a story like this where a guy converts to safety midway of the season, shows up, wins the starting job isn't just there for depth, right? I've seen it to where people have moved back to positions they played for high school or positions they played earlier in their career for depth, just in case in an emergency. But to be able to get the starting job, 300 yards passing, 150 yards last week, a Michael Vick, I think, type run. I think, Andre, you called it. And I think that's the the crafty lefty, great, great call there. So, so tell us, uh, Jalen Maiden, you know, outside of San Diego, what kind of buzz is he generating and, and the story of what he's been able to do? I'm, I've never seen anything like this before. You know, it, here's a safety, right? So converting from safety and then getting called upon. So, I mean, to me, it came random. Maybe you guys do. It was in the works, but it was very random in the Hawaii game when he just came in and the offense was like, oh, wow, like, San Diego State's offense is working with this guy, and then he won the job. So it's nothing I've ever seen before. And, you know, the Mountain West, 
doesn't get enough credit and the bottom teams are really bad, but still it's, it's a FBS conference and there's good teams and he's doing a really good job against some of these teams. And it's like, he should be getting more credit than he is. But again, the Mountain West in general, right? Uh, I mean, you guys know, gets overlooked pretty easily. And uh, it, it it's, a, it's an amazing story. I just love to see underdog stories like that and kind of just out of the blue, this guy coming in and has been phenomenal from, especially from where San Diego State was the first few weeks of the year. It's been night and day offensively. So it, it's, I just love to see it, man. I, I'm rooting for Jalen Maiden, even though I'm a Fresno State guy. Like, I want to see him do well because this is a story I've never seen before, uh, I mean, in my life. So it's been fun. If, you know, we've, we've obviously kind of gone through the Fresno offense and the defense. You know, if there's one thing we said, Matt, Fresno State's going to win this game because they do X, what would X be? Because they, they're going to run the football down San Diego State's throats, at least I hope. I think I hope that's the game plan. And I mean, it worked with Jordan Mims, and he's so hard to stop. Yeah, I mean, you know, Aztec fans are well aware uh, of Mims for his 186 yards and two touchdowns in last year's game. So, and I think the the players, um, Brady Hoke mentioned it on Tuesday. Keyshawn Banks mentioned it. So, like, they're they've watched that film and they're they're, you know, they they said they use it as fuel. So they're they're gonna mm-hmm. be they're gonna be out there to try to stop and slow down Mims. So it's gonna be a it's mm-hmm. it's gonna be a great battle. Yeah, I mean, of course, they played New Mexico last week, but he had 165 yards on 26 carries. So they knew he was going to run the football, and he still ran for 165 yards and a score. So I just hope that's the game plan they go with because I just can't put my money on Logan Fife to pass the ball 40 times a game and beat San Diego State. Yeah, and I think that's the the whole interesting question. I mean, obviously, going into uh, last week, um, you mentioned the 165 yards against New Mexico. New Mexico had a better run defense average than San Diego State going into that game. And this is the question for the Aztecs if they are able to get back to that dominant run game. Um, a year ago, Andre mentioning, you know, the the game last year, they didn't start running the ball great. That was not how they started, but Hayner was able to throw the ball over the field. They had to adjust to him and then they were able to run it after that, after some turnovers, et cetera. Um, so it will be interesting to see if Mims is able to establish that same dominant run game with the Aztecs, especially up the middle, because that's where the Aztecs have been their weakest. And they've made some personnel changes to to be a little bit more stout up the up the middle. Um, and it paid off last week. That's I think is is where the game is going to be won and lost, and of course always with with um, any kind of turnovers that may take place. But I think you hit it on the you hit the nail on the head. Like that it, it's that running game, and can San Diego State both stop the run and and can they establish some of their own? Yeah, you bring up a great point with Hayner. With Hayner running the offense, it's a totally different team. So you know, if Hayner was healthy, this conversation would be completely different, and I'd be like. Jake yeah. Hanner, just throw the ball 30 times, throw it to Crawford 20 times, and you're going to be good. But without Hayner, you know, it's very one-dimensional. Cropper had 158 yards last week, but, again, against New Mexico. Like, no offense, but New Mexico hasn't even won a Mountain West game this year. So playing San Diego State is, is a totally different story. So uh, just, you know, at the end of the – sometimes you got to give the ball to your best player. And right now – the best player is Jordan Mims. Just hand him the ball 30 times with absolute stakes. Let him be Derrick Henry, hopefully. Matt, Matt, before we let you go, are you willing to uh, give us a prediction on this game? I wish I remember the score I predicted in my article, but I'm going to go Fresno State. It's going to be a close game. I'm going to say I'm going to say 24 to 20 Fresno State. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be one of uh, San Diego State's highest offensive performances of the season if they can get to twenty. So yeah, yeah, and again, uh, Fresno State defense—you know—it's like Ben don't break, but when they break, they really break. 
So I just hope they don't really break and they hang around a little bit. But yeah, I think this is Fresno State shot to kind of get back to 500 and then just blossom for there. Forget about everything else that happened at the beginning of the year. And Hainer should be back soon and everything will be good. Anyway, wait, I want to ask you about Hayner. I know he said that before we let you go, but you think he's coming back? I mean, he tried Didn't to le- he tried to leave the program, found out that he was a two time transfer, and so would have had to sit out a year. Has clear NFL aspirations. Why would he risk injury to come back for a team he already tried to leave at the beginning of the year? Do you mean coming back to play this season? I do. No, yes, I mean this season. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. I think he's going to come back. Um, I'm not sure if you guys saw, but last year when he announced that he was leaving, like, there was a lot of people on campus that, like, were hating Jake Hayner. Like, they hung up banners, like, oh, yeah. cursing Jake Hayner, basically, right? You remember that? So, oh, completely. that was a terrible situation. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm not taking their side at all, but I don't think Hayner's going to do that. And, have to go through all that personally again because if he does that this year they're gonna it's gonna be ugly over here but he came back for tefford at least that's what he said so um i really believe he's gonna come back the last few games and try to get a bowl game and you know improve his draft stock i think he still needs to improve it a little bit especially with the quarterbacks coming in this class that we've seen i mean he's not one of the top tier. So he needs to improve his draft stock a little bit. I'd be surprised if he didn't come back at all. Okay. No, that, 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 that was the question. I, I, I honestly take the, from the out much more of an outsider view from Fresno state. Uh-huh. I, I uh, take the other opinion. I, 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 it would surprise me if, if, uh, if they saw him, but I think this game goes a long way towards helping him make that decision because they need him to be able to win a Mountain West championship, and they will absolutely be in the driver's seat for that if they can take out the Aztecs on Saturday. Yeah, but the, I mean, he's been practicing, and they've you know shown clips of him hobbling still a little bit. So I feel like they wouldn't. I don't know. Maybe it's just my present state oblivious going in, but I feel like they wouldn't string it along. They would have already said like, "Oh, he's not going to play," but. Honestly, who knows, right? And Jake Hanner knows, and maybe Jeff Tedford knows, but I I expect him to come back this year. And the way he left that that game was was devastating. And we all thought he was out for the season. So I think if he comes back, plays one game, we'll be happy about that. Got it, Matt. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, we appreciate you as always um, for what you do for East Village Times and everything else you do. And uh, we thank you for your insight, and uh, we'll see what happens on Saturday night. Hey, thank you, guys. I appreciate it, and uh, best of luck on Saturday night. All right. Have a good night. Later, Matt. Thank you, you too. All right, Paul, uh, we were able to get some uh, info on Fresno State from Matt. You know, this is going to be a tough game. I, you know, every game is tough, but this one's probably the toughest game on the schedule as of this point in terms of importance. Obviously, Boise and Utah – might have been better teams, but this is up to, up to, you know, eight games into the season. This is the biggest game of the season so far. So, you know, at that, at the end of the day, what do the Aztecs need to do to pull out a victory? I agree with everything you just said, pivoting a little bit from it. I, I think it was what I took most from the conversation with Matt is how similar the Aztecs and the Bulldogs are. I mean, you, if you would have just changed the, changed the name, um, the uncertainty that is just surrounding that team, um, I think it is it's pretty interesting. And you can definitely see why people would be nervous. What we said in the conversation is correct. If the Aztecs are able to stop the run, and whichever team is, is able to um, establish the run, conversely, um, I think is the team that wins. I don't know which team that will be. I think, um, I think Fresno State has a better offensive running team than the Aztecs do. But I think Kurt Maddox is really a good coach. And I think that uh, what we saw in the first half of the season is not what we're going to see the rest of the year. What about you? So uh, my, my parting thought was actually related to Kurt Maddox. Okay. And it has to do with Caden McDonald. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Caden McDonald played Sam linebacker, all conference first team last year. Looked like he was that was his position. And then in the spring, they they bring his brother in and they want his brother to play Sam and they move Caden to, to the middle. You know, I think they said that they think that that's maybe where Caden can play at the next level and things like that. And then the spring depth chart comes out and Caden is listed as the or starter at Sam and Mike. Mm-hmm. And we had Kurt Maddox on our preseason podcast preview. And what did he say? I, he was joking, but it, I, I can't forget this now is, you know, I just didn't want to be the dummy that um, moved a all conference first team Sam linebacker away from his best position or, or his position. I'm paraphrasing, but it was something like that. Yeah, right? no, you know it. Six games in, he's back to Sam. You know, Coach Coke, when I asked him about it on Tuesday, said, you know, he's more functional. Caden's more functional. He feels better there. He has less to less, you know, eyesight or he only has to look at one side of the field. And I just wonder if that was a big part of the defense's resurgence. The competition was not high. Obviously, Nevada was probably one of the weakest offenses they played this year. But just the, the defense just looked more like themselves and. I, I wonder if that's more of a sign of things to come specifically from that. Uh, but just that, that whole, this whole thing kind of reminded me of that conversation and some of the things we had talked about either off or on, on camera or on air. So it was just very interesting to see how it's played out, you know, halfway through the season. And he's back to, to Sam where he probably should have been the whole time. I agree. And I think that what he's good at is he's good at, being able to read and understand what defenses are doing. Um, Matt talked about the quick passing game. So you're talking bubble screens, you're talking all of that. And Caden McDonald is really good at being able to sniff those out and to go and to provide that extra support without giving up too much when he's going and rushing the quarterback. So I think having him in that, that position, you know, where he was a first team all mountain West without unbelievable stats. Right. right. He He's the kind of guy that opposing coaches are like, oh, yeah, 54 is ruining everything that we're trying to do. But he's not necessarily the guy who's bringing down the ball carrier. I think you saw a lot of that against Nevada. Like I said, I, I think that uh, Kurt Maddox is good at his job. And I think it's not just him. I mean, the fact that he's able to stick with Zyrus, not, you know, it would be really easy there to to go with um, Cedric Lakalaka, who obviously played a lot. But you saw some of the 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 parts of his game that are that are struggling going from sideline to sidelines and really getting to the outside. So I think that you know there's a lot of potential there. But to be able to to get back to stopping the run. All that said, if you just go off of results of the, from this year, it's a huge advantage for the Bulldogs to be able to put you know their running back up the middle uh, behind a really big line um, that's really coming into its own and. Um, you know, kind of creating an identity as a team that can run the football. So it'll be really, really interesting to see. And then the second point with it um, is, you know, just the big play, right? I mean, we already mentioned turnovers, so that would be, you know, kind of included in that. But is there a big return that Jordan Bird gets? Or as you pointed out, you know, Fresno State has a good returner. It being able to be the team that can consistently pin the other team inside of the 10-yard line on punts. What's the big play? Like, like, is there a deep shot? I mean, right now, the way that teams have played Jalen Maiden, they have said, throw the ball over our heads, show that you can hit the deep pass. Like they're begging for it. But you know what? That was the case for years with Coach Horton as the offensive coordinator, and it didn't really ever develop. And so can San Diego State get some of those one-on-one things, but not just a one-on-one catch for five, six, seven, eight yards, but can they break a tackle, you know, and pick up that big play? So those are some of the things that I'm looking for. Yeah, the punt returner, uh, Ramiyo, Cal transfer, he he was like one of the best returners in the country last year. And he's already returned a punt for a touchdown this year. So he's dangerous, both not from a receiving perspective, but also from a uh, kick return. So definitely someone to keep an eye on during this game. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us. I hope you guys enjoyed this preview and look forward to Saturday night's game. 
Uh, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and all of our all of your favorite podcast platforms so you know exactly when our new episodes come out. Make sure to like, comment, share uh, with all of your friends and family who are Aztec fans if you think they'll appreciate these episodes as well. We'll bid adieu and talk to you guys next time. You are listening to the SDSU Football Podcast, presented by the East Village Times with your hosts, Andre Hagverdian and Paul Garrison.